Now that 2020 is over, everything's perfect, right? Yeah. Now it's just 21. No, 20, 21. Anyways, don't think everything's going to get better. I would definitely recommend to continue to prep. No matter what it is, no matter what you need. Fill the voids. Talked about that a little bit last time. But today, we're going to talk about a few knives. And I just figured I'd show off a couple cheaper. That one's got a little glass break around there. If you had to. Uh, skull crack or whatever you want to call it. And uh, if you're on a budget to still be able to have something that you could carry. Now, depending on state and the regulations in your area. This is a G and W it looks like. Nothing extravagant. Uh, pretty basic. Pocket knife. It's got that little glass breaker, the thing. I mean, you can hear it on wood and I barely hit it, you know? So it's got a little something to it. Pocket knife. I love stuff like that. That's why I like full tang knives. I'll be showing off a couple of uh, lock blades like that. And then I've got a few uh, fixed blades also that I want to uh, post up but let everybody see. But I think this one was under 10 bucks. Not sure, but about that, somewhere in there. But little pocket knife, budget. Does it work as a tool for work? I would say yeah. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's uh, tacky and it seems to work fine. Shouldn't be an issue. I'm just gonna set them over there when I'm done with them. Got a little pile of uh, first, I'm gonna be doing pretty much all just cheaper uh, budget. You know, probably everything here is around, I know it's at least under 20 bucks, you know, but this one, is one that I actually just got for Christmas and uh and the oldest got that one for me just a pocket knife a lock blade right I do like the blades she knows I'm into the funky blades and I like I like funky blades fatter blades this one's kind of a thicker handled one and I've got another one that I'll be showing you that has a little bit longer handle and another kind of fatter blade to it but this one's got a okay feel to it not bad for something at work or something just to have in your pocket you know you never know when you're gonna need a knife for whatever it might be and that's why i wanted to post up that i mean i think that one i don't know if either one of them are over 10 bucks you know uh, at least under 15 for for this one here it's called a tack force that you get a good look at i mean the blade looks kind of cool i like the funky blades like that the, the funky blade is funky i like that i like that and for for the price you're on a budget, can't go wrong. It's a pocket knife, you got something. That's pretty much what the whole video I'm thinking is gonna be about, is at least you have something on you. It's better than having nothing. Same with any type of weapon or any type of tool. At least you have a screwdriver. You might not have a screw gun, but you have a screwdriver. I will show you, there's that other funky bladed one. I know I've showed it a couple times and, he, uh, and that guy glows. I found out he glows. Um, and a couple of the other live streams but that one's just got a big fat funky blade on it it's a uh i don't know what it said dark side blade by ballistic so it's it's nothing crazy it's no real brand name kind of a fatter handle on it that thing actually lights up in the dark too but this one is legal in my state too it's you know under the three inches or whatever so it's perfectly good for a a pocket knife and then when you pull it out people are like man i just i just needed a knife i didn't need a meat cleaver and i just because that blade's so fat it's pretty cool though it works great i carry that thing around a lot lately and it's a it's a budget blade it was uh maybe that one was about 20 bucks probably just because of the glow in the dark stuff but there's a couple of folding knives and here was the other one i was talking about this one is a uh m -Tech which we've, we've shown a couple different m -Techs. I think I got one more over here too that I'll be showing that's a fixed blade Grambit. But it's an M-Tech. And now this one, starting to get a little bit, uh, uh, you can see in the light, it's a little over that three inches. So this one, you know, especially depending on where you are, might not be a completely legal pocket knife. Uh, but either way, it is, uh, it's, it's comfortable in the hand. It's usable for stuff real easy you can even throw it in your pack it's got a clip on it just like the other lock blades you clip it into your pack and you'd have it in your edc or something like that and i want to say that one was 
10 or 12 bucks, something like that. You know, it was not anything seriously expensive. So, decent little pocket knife. Works out great. Budget, budget. At least you have something on you. That's what we're looking for. So, uh, as far as the pocket knives, I'm gonna go really cheap with this one. This was not a regular pocket knife. It comes with a little fire starter. It's a survivor's knife. Um, we did a video on these actually and it's it's a full tang knife but they were like two for 10 bucks or something on Amazon a little tanto style knife nothing crazy whatsoever but you could use it for something I mean it's still something if you have it in the pack and we even started a fire with this on the video you can see we wore it down a little bit but two for like ten dollars it's still a knife it and two for ten, they say what redundancy, right? With any kind of survival, anything, and it's, uh, you know, one is none and two is one or something like that. Well, you get two of them for like ten bucks on Amazon. It was ridiculous. If you go back and watch our video, you'll see us starting fires and stabbing it into stuff or whatever. But nothing wrong with it. I mean, full tang knife. It's it's just a whole piece of steel. So whatever, cheap budget. Throw it in the pack. Set that one over there. Grab a uh, here's a little bit bigger one. This one I've had for I don't even know 20 something years, and it's a Ontario blade. The only reason why I actually put this one in there is I think these nowadays might actually be about $30 or something like that. I'm not sure. That, that Ontario USA might even be a little bit more than that. I originally got this thing brand new in a box from somebody 20 something years ago who I don't know exactly what they paid for it and I've done a lot of stuff for this thing I can't believe it's actually still working but I got it for six dollars and six dollars is just ridiculous that's the uh, spec plus marine SP 194 so it's kind of a kind of a K bar looking thing with more of a polymer handle there and it's I don't know. It hasn't hasn't done me wrong for any type of reason. I mean, it works fine, and it, for me, it was a really budget blade. It was six dollars. You know, it wasn't even as much as some of those newer lock blades, and it's uh, it's gone for a long time. <laughs> You've got the same shoestring in there from a long time ago. Huh. I don't know, probably about twenty years ago. But cheap, and like I said, I don't know what those are nowadays. But they're probably about thirty bucks or something like that. But I haven't. I haven't even looked. Uh, here's another M Tech. That's M Tech USA, and this one will be good for a pack, depending on where you live. All those good restrictions, but it is a karambit, and it's a fixed blade one. It's not a uh, uh, lock blade that comes out, but you can still, you know, get it swinging backwards. It's it's a uh, it's a pretty solid piece for what it is. It is made in China. It does say that it says. Um, Oh, MT664 stainless USA design. It's thick. You can crack someone with the back of that thing. It would it would uh, not be comfortable to get hit with the ring on that, you know. So good defensive tool. Uh, you could leave it in a pack if you needed to. The Kydex sheath leaves a little bit to be desired, I think. But I think this one was only like nine bucks. And I think I did get it on Amazon. I can't remember. I've never done a review on it. It's just kind of there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Don't really carry it much or anything, but to be a backup blade for under $10, you know, you can't beat the fact of just having a blade for $10, really. It can be pretty cheap. For 10 bucks. you could do something with it. You could take any of them and, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be a fixed blade to... to um, feather stick with or to cut a piece of rope with or anything and it don't have to be that expensive <clears throat> you're not necessarily going to completely beat up every single blade that you have for whatever reason it might be i like doing like when i got that shrade blade that bigger shrade blade <clears throat> i think that one was about 30 bucks uh, 52 or whatever it is we lumped on that thing we even hit it with a, a regular hammer on the end and I mean, it held up. Everything worked out great with it, but you don't need to do that with everything. This was, I want to say, 
And that's a, a sheath my mom made. I did a video on this one. I, I paracorded the handle. Um, it's a cold steel Bushman. You can see I've beaten on that thing a little bit. I've chopped a lot of stuff with that. And that, you know, that has a hole in here you can put it onto a stick. If you had a screw or anything to attach it with, you could even screw it down. But I think when I got this one, it was under 20 bucks. I think they're probably almost about $30 now, cold steel. Nice Bushman. It's, uh, it's a little bit more of a chopper, but it's in that in-between. And you could still use it as a defensive weapon, probably very easily. Or offensive, depending on how you fight with them. Uh, or putting it onto a spear, you know, a piece of wood and having a spear, you could use it for several different things, you know. Gathering food and such. But, uh, yeah, the sheet that came with this one wouldn't stay in or anything, so my mom... Made me some leather and it seemed to fit pretty good. She does pretty good. Stitch it all thick and everything, but has pretty thick leather as she used too. So that was pretty cool. I was I was pretty happy. And it what was a cheaper blade too when I originally got it. This one, five dollars. I don't think that will stay in there too good. Oh, well, maybe it kind of does. It's like a fabric sheath. You see, it's wood. Got that funky fat curve that I kind of really like and you can see I did some stuff with this one it's getting kind of mashed up a little bit but for five dollars five dollars I got it at like tractor supply I think it was full tank steel right through it that's a budget knife I mean five bucks it's got a heck of a grip the back of that thing no problem whatever you needed to yeah so it's good I mean even a little camping blade or Keeping an extra blade, I don't know, it's probably over to three inches, yeah, a little bit. Uh, five dollars, though. I mean, even the wood looks pretty nice for five bucks. It's got a decent, comfortable grip. It's, uh, it's a decent little blade. I've, I've had it for several years now. I got a couple more over here to show you. That's another fixed blade, full tang. I really like those. Here is, I can't remember the name of this one. And the sheath is not not the best, but it's enough to hold it in there because of the... Oh, yeah, it won't come out. Master Cutlery, I think it was called. Once again, a little bit of a arch in there. I kind of like the blades like that. It's a MU1144 stainless, and this one is also made in China. USA. I want to say we got it for... I want to say like 15 bucks or something. I can't can't really remember. But it feels pretty good in the hand. You could easily do what you needed to do. You could cut rope with that. It's full tang. It's solid. Give them the shot off the back end of that or something. No problem. I like it. And for the price and the shape, I think it's really comfortable. You could easily use it for a uh, defensive style weapon. And... Uh, I do have one more that we did get more recently, um, and it was also $5, believe it or not. This one I got for the kid, and I want it. <laughs> it's a little Kydex. It holds it in there. It's an Ozark Trails. It was actually bought at Walmart, and we barely used it, but we did try to use it for fire starting on a Phariseum rod, and this one... Even though it's full tang and it's solid, it's so, it's thin. It's it's inside that three inch, no problem. So you, so, you know, here where I'm at, I could put that on the side of a blade. I could keep it in the left side. You know, you, you're carrying your weapon on the, on the right hand side or something like that. This could easily be on the left hand side and, you know, you could pull it out and it's fast enough. It's light enough. This would be, for me... I went back to and tried to see if they had them, and they didn't have no more, and I really should have got them. I should probably try to, I mean, for five bucks for this one, I, like I said, I paid five bucks for that bigger one, too, at Tractor Supply, and that's a big, heavier, let me just pull that back out, show a little bit of comparison there. Uh, if you'll be able to see the blade thickness, yeah, you can see it right there pretty good. That's a lot more beefy than this little thing. This little thing, I think, would just be an incredible for the price and everything. It's so small. It doesn't give you any kind of reach for uh, anything too defensive or whatever, but 
Still, with the clip on here like this, I clipped this thing in, I'm sure. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Hey, very nice. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, everybody, that is um, Jason on there, and he did start a YouTube channel, too, just so you know. It's called the um, Homestead Survivalist. I think we just, uh, uh, he just put the first video up today when I was down there, up there, wherever it was. Anyways, you put this little thing on there, no problem. I wonder if it'll pop out of there without, you know, stayed in there. <laughs> We'd have to work on that, maybe. So it stays in good enough because it wouldn't come out off that little hook or however you're going to end up doing it. But that small, that light, that little thing, and for five bucks. The RT scrub is a wicked fixed blade knife. Oh, yes, I've seen some of those, too. I like some of the... Uh, cheaper budget knives that are, I mean, everything I pretty much showed was uh, $20 or less. And I don't see a reason why you can't buy something that's got full steel. It says, dude, hurry with the video. The Buckeyes are coming out soon. <laughs> All right, Todd's a gun guy. I'm pretty much done. I just drew up a couple different, um, a couple different little cheap budget blades to have. I mean, this little thing, I just think is so cool. I don't know why. It just feels really comfortable in my hands. I'd like to use it as like a backup to a firearm or something like that. Someone, uh, you know, for weapon retention. Someone pushes down on my one side and I could pull it out and I could I could uh, remove their hands off my stuff. Not bad for five bucks. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it. And it stays in there. The only problem is I just tried to put it on my side and I couldn't pull it out without the whole thing coming up. But And then this one here also was five dollars and this one that was that one was at walmart that was our trail and this one was uh, a bigger fatter beefier one for five bucks that was at um tractor supply i don't know it was just there and i thought it was crazy and i'm going what 4.99 i can't that is a meaty piece man and now i'm beating it up a little bit but yeah for five bucks both of those for five bucks happy new year to you too sir uh, what are you dipping? <laughs> I shouldn't be showing this kind of stuff. Uh, citrus. <laughs> Anyways, I should have taken it out ahead of time, but either one for five bucks. You can't, you can't really go wrong. Five bucks. Just like with most of the uh, lock blades. And those two were not lock blades. Those were full size pieces. Just like some of these little lock blades for $10. I mean, look at this. This little guy, that little M Tech, is just like flop, and it comes out. I mean, it's a decent size, and it's comfortable. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that thing. I don't see nothing wrong. With it. There you go. You see it better. Yeah, that's the kids. One of the kids that she likes to roll around with. It's one of her favorites. It's comfortable. I asked if I could borrow it for the video. Come on, let me show them something cheap. That's not a cheap knife, Dad. It's a good one. Well, yeah, but. It's still cheap. It's a budget blade, you know? So, I don't know what you guys are carrying. I know you said CRT. That's pretty cool. Um, and not just carrying and throwing in packs and stuff. Uh, what do you use to sharpen your knives? Grizzly Wizard Green, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, stuff's getting expensive. I gotta quit. It's bad for you. Uh, what am I using to sharpen it? I have it actually in my EDC pack. I've got a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's a samurai shark, actually. It was one of those as seen on TV things, one of the original ones. And it's like tungsten blades or something like that. And they do good. It's no problem to uh, sharpen something up quick, easy. And it seems to hold the sharpen pretty good. That is out in my vehicle in the one pack, in the vehicle pack. Um, and I do have a regular stone that had, it was a cheap one. And I don't, I don't even think I use, I don't know that I've even used it much. But it has like just a coarse and a fine. There's nothing, nothing special about it. It was like a cheap brand uh, sharpener. But that Samurai Shark was back in the day like, I think maybe 10 bucks or something, whatever. Maybe it was 20 bucks actually, come to think of it. But uh, <coughs> um, I guess that's pretty much... What I was trying to show off was just a, a couple of budget weapons or tools, however you want to see them, like the uh, like the Bushman. Nice tool for camping. Nice tool for survival. 
you could use it if you had to, no problems. Um, my CRT minimalist, uh, quick and have to sharpen. Oh yeah, yeah that, um, I don't even know. There's another, there's one that I saw. Fino edge sharpener is all right. Steel construction instead of aluminum. Chainsaw file works, yeah. Uh, I prefer Lansky stone. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of that. Thanks for the info. That's what's nice about having everybody on there being able to talk about stuff. So you can hear some of it and then you can go back and look it up again. I'm going to have to check some of them out. I, my main thing is that Samurai Shark. And I think I have one also that's kind of like that. That It's kind of a drag through. That Samurai Shark uh, also has a piece that sticks out of the bottom. In case you have something that's really chipped up or banged up at all. And you can really nick it just that one piece at a time. But I also have, I think my father got it for me quite a long time ago. I don't even know what pack it's in or where it's at, but I know it's probably in one of the packs. And that was a uh, Gerber one. And that was a, a cheaper one, too, uh, that you just drag through. You know, it has um, cross pieces in it, and you just drag through it. I'm sure there's probably uh, quite a few good ones. I've just had that Samurai Shark so long that I haven't really had to use anything else. It's actually worked really good for me keeps everything nice and sharp no problems and it's not that big and you know it just sits right in the pack um you know smaller than a blade pretty much or it's more like a maybe about that size or something like a folded knife or something that he it's not even that thick but it works good it works good i have no problems with it and that little gerber one was like a squared one you could probably find them on amazon or something like that just something to drag the blades through I just like that piece on the back of the Samurai Shark to knock it. Gerber one is part of my EDC. Yeah, see, and they, and they work good. And with the hatchets, when I was when I was cutting, cutting a lot more wood in the other place, we had a fireplace, I was cutting a lot more wood and having the, um, that, just that back piece. Thanks, I had to pick one up soon. Oh yeah, we need something to keep them sharp, right? Um, when I was using the axes more, it was kind of nice to have that piece that stuck out of the back because sometimes on the axe too, it would get banged up a little bit or nicked up and you know, just from banging it off the wood too much. Or however, however it ends up happening, you get a burr on the end or something. And that little back piece nicks, I mean, and it will knock that burr down and then you could drag it through there. And that's like a three prong one, the uh, Samurai Shark. It wor it's worked for me now for, I don't even know when those things were on as seen on TV and then somewhere in there, maybe I got it at a Walmart or something like that. And it was, I don't know, yeah, 20 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't even know what it was. And they're like, it's the last sharpener you ever need. And so far I've had no problems with it. It's worked out great. Keeps everything sharp. And the pocket knives, I don't sharpen like this one I carry all the time and I don't sharpen it much. It's still pretty sharp. It's got, it's got serration, so it cuts. And I, I cut a little bit of plastic at work here and there, you know, uh, wrapping off of stuff um, in plastic trays and stuff. And every time it works good. Like I said, they always tell me, hey, you got a knife on you? You pull that thing out. You're like, yeah, here you go. And they're like, ah, oh, not a cleaver, you know. <laughs> not a meat cleaver. I just needed a knife. But it's fun, too. Good conversation pieces, talking and showing off what you got. It's just a fun time. And with a budget blade that you can afford to put, like that little Ozark, you could afford to put, you know, one in a, a bug out bag, a full size bug out bag, one in an EDC pack, and um, leave one in like your car bag or your scorpion bag, you know, some of us got scorpions in bags and stuff. Wouldn't be bad to have an extra piece in there. I need to get started, or get it serrated soon for emergencies such as getting through seat belts. Yes, and I know we had one, it was kind of like this. I mean, that's got that glass breaker on there, but it had a hook on the back and it was a cheap blade too. I don't even know where that thing is. I have to, I have to take a look. I'm getting like so many extra packs and you know, I'm leaving some stuff here and some stuff there and I'm kind of spread out with stuff. What about the ugly wrench knife you got? The ugly wrench knife. I'm trying to think of what that is. The ugly wrench knife. Oh yeah, that was, 
Okay, I think I know where that one is. The Ugly Wrench Life is the one we made, or Jason made it for us, actually. The Homesteading Survivalist is his new channel. I'm with you. I always have people asking for knives. There's probably how many folks carry something here. Yeah. Can never have enough knives. Yeah, it's true. And the one with the little hook like that is, uh, yeah, that's good for the, the belt zipper. Uh, you can use... Uh, yeah, like the gut hook blades, basically. But, you know, that's more of a hunting knife. But, yeah, if you had something with serration, too, to cut the belt. I don't know that many of these little lock blades have. No, that one doesn't have serration either. Just that fat skull one's got some serration. But, yeah, that would probably do a belt. Pretty quick and easy. No problem with that. But uh, the fat, ugly wrench knife was... Um, one of Jason's first uh, attempts. I saw it and it had a it had a ring in it, you know, so it was kind of like a karambit. You know, it's a wrench, uh, closed end and then an open end. And I was like, you know, if you hack that thing off and you hammered it down, yeah. And he made that for me. It was it was pretty cool. I still got it. I know where it is. It's actually in I think my bag in the vehicle because we were messing around with it uh, a couple videos ago or something like that, and I just threw it in the bag or something. But yeah. That was fun. <laughs> that thing's a big, heavy clunker. And it was cheap, too. He got a bunch of tools. I really like those. He could be tools. I will be getting some someday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think, man, I don't know. Probably out of all these budget ones right now, because that's my youngest child's. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> so what are you going to use it for, Dad? If you, get, you know, if you give me something else, I'll, I'll give you this one. Like, uh, yeah, I think I should. I just had to find a way to keep it completely attached to my to my belt loop because that thing just seemed to slip out every time I tried to pull it out. But if I try to yank it out quick, because uh, like I said, for weapon retention, there's so much pinned down on your one side and you can't get your weapon out, I could... Oh, it came out. Live on TV, it came out. Or on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it came out of there. Yeah, but that's a good way to get their arms off you or, you know... Uh, Stay away, you know. But plus, it's a little full tang thing. It's so lightweight. Look at that little thing. I don't even know why I like it. It was like all black, like all my weapons and stuff. But yeah, I don't know, guys. It's been fun. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, if it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks for the comments. Thanks for let you know everybody letting me know what kind of sharpeners you need. Later, Todd the Gun Guy. Just wondering. Where was that Walmart incident you had a while back? Don't need to, don't need to tell, just wondering. Uh, the Walmart incident that I had. Which incident? I've had a couple Walmart incidents. Uh, good talk, y'all. Uh, good video, Andy. Hey, thanks, uh, that's uh, the Homestead Survivalist, Jason. Go check his channel out. He's just starting. I'm going to have a couple of videos. We'll probably do some more videoing over there, too, for uh, something about someone was being shady after fun. Oh, yeah. That happened right when last year <laughs> during the toilet paper incident. Uh, we had gone and we, we just went uh, bigger shopping. So once in a while, we'll go and, uh, and uh, grab... A little bit more than normal and I actually had the truck with me that day and there was um, there was people trying to rip people off pretty much in the parking lot and that was uh, that was in one of the cities in Michigan um, I don't know if I want to say exactly too much about where it was but it was uh, kind of outskirts ish but in the city still and there was people yeah that were uh, you know, all the different people were throwing stuff in the back of their vehicles and everybody with trucks. And there was guys that were uh, looking at, you know, walking by and the one guy's running by and they're just like peeking in the back of everybody's vehicles. And then I went and started putting stuff in. Well, the one guy ran right up to my vehicle and, you know, you don't know what's happening. I don't want to jump the gun on nothing. Looked like he wanted to grab something out and take off running. I didn't know what was going on. And we ended up, uh, you know, I stopped and look. I'm depending on what I just say. So I don't want to escalate anything any further than it has to be. No need for the extra. So anyways, he looked at me, he stopped, and took off running. Back to a car that was, there was two cars, three cars, I don't even remember, two or three cars. It was two cars. 
that were down the parking lot a little ways and around nobody you know all the cars were up a lot closer to the door and these guys were at the end well when we took off took off out of there the two vehicles followed us and uh it was uh down the road a few miles i had taken a turn i went down to one of the next main roads down a mile or two took another turn and they were following and then went down about another mile took another turn and i didn't go anywhere directly back towards my house i was just trying to see if they were following me or not following me because it was the two vehicles that were sitting there that pulled out behind us when we left and then i got to like a little roundabout and i i had the the truck and it it's got a hemi <laughs> it's got a hemi right so I got after it a little bit, you know, whipped off onto a side street, and it, it looked like they were following around. Glad you're all right. Oh, your situation aware. Thanks for the video. Yes, Happy New Year. And, uh, yeah, I ended up uh, losing them at some point. We pulled off to the side, and I, I kind of got a little bit more ready. I usually carry the scorpion with me and everything, uh, so I got I got extra back with me usually if I really need it. Over the Glock, I got something that's a little bit... A little bit more effective maybe with a group or something like that i don't even know how many people there was and the one vehicle was actually pretty nice i do remember that and um i tucked off in a spot and they ended up going down past us and it was thank god it was you know there was no incident or anything like that it was just uh it was just right after that whole toilet paper issue um people were just kind of losing their minds and that just i don't know if i was just in the wrong place at the wrong time we usually try to do like a bigger shop like once a month and then uh, every two weeks or something we'll do like a little fill-in you know because these kids they don't stop eating they just constantly eat it doesn't matter i used to have back before i started doing live stream this whole thing was filled up with ramen noodles and that took what two days three days for these guys <laughs> one of them came down here so i'm like ah, they ate all the ramen noodles <laughs> but uh what does it say run out of toilet paper and use your neighbors <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so I don't know. That was that was uh, a few months ago now. Actually, that was a uh, March. I don't even know something like that. Yeah, we've actually moved since then, and uh, yeah, haven't seen it too crazy like that. It's it's good to definitely keep your eyes open. You know, that have that alertness, or people call it awareness. You know, situational awareness, or just pay attention. It's always good to pay attention, and it's always good if you got one in your pocket knife. Uh -huh, this one's hers. See. It's always good if you have a little pocket knife to at least um, help you if you had to. But the biggest problem about weapons, I guess we might as well talk about that right now, is if you don't have training with them, they can be used against you horribly. And, I mean, they it could just be a bad thing. Bye. Yeah, see ya. She stopped by and then she leaves. See how that works? It's always better when they leave. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, they can... You just got to learn. It, good to get some sort of instruction with with weapons as they can be they can be a good and a bad thing people just don't think sometimes i mean even as simple as you know hmm, uh, you know you're whittling something like wood but you wouldn't want to stab into anything even wood with a lock blade that has a chance of you know closing in on your fingers or something so you'd never want to on a tactical style blade or a lock blade you'd never want to do any Straight in stabbing. I mean, it's different if you're uh, straight down, you know, slashing down, no problem. But it's a slicer. These things are slicers, you know. You got to get something even like this little mini thing like that. <laughs> Just because it's full tang, that will go in. You know, you can stick it into. I wonder if you can see that on camera. Can't see it on camera. Can you see that on camera? Let me like that. Can you see it? Yeah, it's stuck in. See? Easy. <laughs> it sticks in. Don't have to worry about it folding over. Poor little blade. I am going to abuse that thing, I think. I don't know. I got to get it from the kid. It was five bucks, and I can't find another one. Jeez, I hate that. Same with this one, though. Like I said before, just being a budget blade. The big, fat thing. I've used that thing so many times. I mean, for all sorts of stuff. So many times. It actually holds an okay blade. This one's probably not as good as that other one I had there That for, for holding a blade, but uh, for five bucks... See, you can still see that. You can see it right there. Oh. I gotta stick it in there. I'm gonna get in trouble. The wife's gonna yell at me for stabbing stuff. This feels very nice. Easy to sharpen. I'm gonna have to check that out. That's the Finno Edge Sharpening System. 
I'm gonna have to check that out. That sounds interesting. You know about how much it was, or you said you purchased one? So I'd like to, uh, I think I'd like to check out one more thing. It might as well, I only got a couple sharpeners, really, so I wouldn't mind throwing one in an extra pack, having that re redundancy if one does break. You know, about how much that one was, or you remember about how much? I'll have to look it up at some point, but I guess uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, if you don't have a cheap pocket knife or something to... I'm going to put that one back in my pocket. What does it say? If I remember correctly, I think it was less than 50 Yeah, well, I mean, $50, it's nice to have a... Uh, it's nice to have a decent quality, too. And I'm just so showing some budget knives here. I mean, you can go get yourself a Topps knife. That's going to be a great knife, too, for $200. That, you know, would cost more than all these knives put together. But this was just having that cheap budget redundancy. I'm throwing them in how many packs and, you know, you throw a chopper and a smaller blade in on a pack and you got it done. And, you, you know, you mess around with them, you play with them. Some of them are here. Well, right now that's kind of like an EDC for me. And, it, and it's cheap. It's like a no-name. But it's like conversation. It's like, oh, that's cool, man. Big fat blade. So whatever you want it for, I do have real weapons in the vehicle or knives in the pack that are are better even some of those shred blades that i do have that shred 52 and in the edc pack i think i have a 57 a little smaller one in the little pack uh neck knifed it you know i, I put paracord through it so you can just yank it off and you got something that you can use for any type of bush bushcraft or uh, survival anything that you need it for and uh it's something and i think that one was like 15 bucks I should grab that one out to show it off too, but yeah, it's all it's all at least having something and and using it too. Get used to uh, starting fires with it. Get used to um, whittling with it or making fire sticks with it. Like and then and then try it if you get something really really cheap like these. You know, try it out with a fire starter and uh, see if it works. And like I said, two for like ten bucks. I mean, just to throw it in a pack. I don't, did I need it? Not at all. But I used to have overtime and it was like, yeah, why not get it? You know, it's one more thing. I'm sure you took that thing off. You could uh, split a, a stick and stick that inside of it and then take this, you know, if you took the par the, the cord, it's not actual paracord. Tough grade paracord. So, so, I need to get more of that 750 stuff. Some of that stuff is pretty nice, yeah. Oh, yeah, 750 paracord. But, yeah, you could split a stick and put this in there, and I'm sure you could take this cord and tie it around and have more of a spear out of it or something like that. And for for the price, cheap stainless. But whatever, I don't know. That one sticks in, too. They all, they all stick in. You can see it. It's hanging. <laughs> it's not a lot, boy. She's going to kill me if I keep doing that. But... <laughs> Either way, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have a better year than last. I'm not saying that it's definitely going to be that way. But uh, all you can do is prepare. Get ready. Grab yourself the extra food, extra ammo if you can. Even though it's a ridiculous price right now. And if you can't afford some of that stuff, you can always run out and get a, I don't know, $5 knife or something like that. Even if, even if you could only afford that once a month, get an extra one or something and... Uh, Start putting a couple extra in the packs. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, wood filler and some wood sand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm down in the basement. Should be should be all right. We shouldn't see it. I didn't really mash it too hard. She probably won't notice. It's not like it doesn't have like hammer marks and nails in it as it is, right? But <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you soon. Have a good night.